Hey Sugar Geeks, Liz here. Today I'm so excited to show you guys how to make my favorite lemon cake in the whole wide world. I seriously have this cake at least once or twice a year just because I love it so much. It's got a delicious cream cheese frosting, a super tart, super lemony curd, and an adorable water ganache made with lemon juice. Yes, you can mix lemon juice with chocolate. It's all coming up next on The Sugar Geek Show. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is weigh out all of our ingredients using a scale. Don't freak out on me. I promise you, using a scale is much easier than using cups once you give it a try. In fact, nobody that has ever tried using a scale who used to use cups has come to me and said, Liz, I totally regret using a kitchen scale. No, they always are like, wow, I wish I would have done this sooner. It is actually way easier, because it is. All you have to do is put your bowl on the scale, press the tear or the zero button to get rid of the weight of the bowl, add your ingredient until it says that number, whatever it is on the recipe, hit the zero button and go to the next ingredient. So simple. We also wanna make sure that our ingredients are room temperature. So when I say room temperature, I mean like a little bit warm. Like let's pretend it's like 70 to 80 degrees in the room. So if your milk is like freezing cold, maybe microwave it for just like 10 or 15 seconds so that it feels just barely warm to the touch. Uh, butter, you wanna be able to press your finger into the surface of the butter, but it's still not melted. Eggs, put those babies in a bowl of hot water for five minutes and they're gonna be a little bit warm. The reason why everything has to be warm is so that it mixes together and creates an emulsion. I know you're like, blah, 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 let's get to the making the cake. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> First, you're gonna take a little bit of your milk, put that into a measuring cup, combine it with the oil, set that aside. Then to the remaining milk, you're gonna add in your eggs, lemon extract, lemon juice, and lemon zest. Whisk it all up and then set that aside. Now we're gonna take all of our dry ingredients, the flour, the sugar, the baking powder, the baking soda, and the salt, and put that into the bowl of our stand mixer with the paddle attachment. I'm using my Bosch Universal Plus mixer. I have a link down there below in the description if you wanna check it out. So this is where it gets interesting. Normally when you're making a cake recipe, I think most people are familiar where you take the sugar, you cream with the butter, you make it nice and fluffy, you add the eggs, and then we do dry ingredients, wet ingredients, dry ingredients, wet ingredients. That's the traditional mixing style. This is called the reverse creaming style. And the way that we do this is we actually take our dry ingredients, we coat them in butter so that we inhibit gluten development, right? We don't want any gluten development. We want this to be as soft as possible. And then we add a little bit of liquid, just a little, to activate the gluten and we develop a, a structure by mixing for a couple of minutes. And then we finish by creating an emulsion with the remaining eggs and liquids. And I know it sounds crazy and you'd be like, I'm stressed about mixing for this long, but I promise you, it's gonna be the best texture of cake you've ever had in your whole life. Just make sure you mix enough. Don't be afraid of over mixing. Now we're gonna slowly add in our butter. That's why this has to be room temperature and kind of soft, but not melted and not rock hard <laughs> because we want all of that butter to coat the flour, just like if we were making a pie crust. Once everything is mixed together and looks like a coarse sand, we're ready to go to the next step. All right, so now we're gonna take the milk and oil mixture, put that in with the dry ingredients, and we're gonna mix for two minutes. Once it's been mixing for two minutes, you can see that it's doubled, it's lighter, it's creamier, it's just nothing but goodness. Now we're going to slowly, <laughs> while mixing on low, drizzle in the rest of our, our milk and egg mixture. And we wanna do this slowly because we're basically tricking the cake to having more moisture than it should, right? It's, this is called a high ratio cake, meaning that normally you have a little bit less sugar in the cake than you do flour. So the more sugar and the more liquids, the moister the cake is gonna be. So to do that though, we have to mix very carefully, drizzle that liquid in there, let it combine slowly, and then once it's all combined, we have a super moist cake batter. Now, some people ask me, can I reduce the amount of sugar in this cake recipe? And the answer is yes. Lots of people have reduced the sugar in this recipe to their taste if they feel like it's too sweet. Just keep in mind, the cake is not going to have exactly the same texture as it would if you kept all that sugar in there. So now we're gonna go ahead and bake our cake layers. I got my oven preheated to 335 degrees Fahrenheit. I have three six inch by two inch cake pans, but you can use any size cake pan you want. I'm coating my cake pans in cake goop. If you don't know what cake goop is, you need to check that out immediately. 
It's a homemade pan release that works way better and is way cheaper than anything that you can buy on the shelves. Now I'm going to fill my cake pans about three quarters of the way full. I do weigh my pans just kind of to make sure that they all have the same amount in there. That way my layers are all even and that way when I cut into it, everything is all pretty. That's just me. You don't have to do that, but I, I do that. I'm not going to lie. So now we're gonna bake these in the oven uh, between 30 and 40 minutes. It really depends on your area and your oven. Like I just got a new oven and it took much longer than it normally does. So it really depends. You just wanna keep an eye on it. Wait until it doesn't seem like jiggly when you touch it on top. You can use a toothpick to test the center, see if it's coming out clean. And then just make note for future how long it took for it to bake and then always bake it at that time. You may notice that this cake puffs up a lot and that's normal. You're like, oh, is it gonna overflow? Like it's gonna be fine. But when I take this cake out of the oven, I do give it a little tap on top of the countertop or on, on the cooling rack. And that helps release the air that kind of built up in there so that it doesn't like crack the top and shrink down too much. So I always do that with all of my cakes that I do the reverse creamy method for. So now we're going to wait for these to cool down in the pan 10 or 15 minutes until you can touch the pans without burning your hands. Flip them out into a cooling rack or you can wrap them up in plastic wrap, throw them in the freezer if you don't plan on using them right away. Freezing your cakes while they're still warm actually locks in moisture so they stay moister for longer. Don't ever just put like an unfrosted cake into the refrigerator, it will dry out super fast. And I'm filling my cake with lemon curd. I'm not gonna show you how to make that one here because it would make the video way too long, but my recipe is right here and it is so, so good. It's a traditional lemon curd with a little bit of extra cornstarch so that it's a nice stable filling for those layer cakes. <laughs> <laughs> hey buddy. <laughs> Hi there. Hi Ezra. He's like, okay, bye bye. In case you're wondering what my kids are doing while I'm doing this, they're outside playing, okay? <laughs> Cream cheese frosting is one of those frostings that it's not complicated, but it's so easy to mess up. So first of all, butter needs to be smooth before you start adding in your cream cheese. So we want to cream the butter until it's nice and smooth and you don't see any lumps or bumps because we don't want any lumps or bumps in our final cream cheese frosting. Then we're gonna start adding in our cream cheese, but it needs to also be room temperature. So if you just took it out of the fridge, chop it up into cubes and let it sit at room temperature for 20 minutes, or if it's really cold in your room, nuke it for like 10 or 15 seconds. So now when we add the cream cheese to the butter, it will blend and become one and you won't have any lumps. As soon as that is blended, you can start adding in your powdered sugar. I always sift my powdered sugar because again, I don't want lumps, but that's not 100% necessary. We're gonna add that in slowly while we're, we're mixing and you stop as soon as it's mixed. If you continue mixing, it makes your cream cheese begin to separate and starts to get watery. If you find that your cream cheese frosting is like too loose, I know a lot of people, um, their instinct is to add more powdered sugar, but what happens is the liquid in the cream cheese dissolves the powdered sugar and it gets more liquid and becomes worse. And then you keep mixing it and it keeps making it more liquid. So if your cream cheese frosting is too loose, what you wanna add is more softened butter and that will make it firmer. And then obviously not over mixing. Then you can add in whatever flavorings you want. Sometimes it's just vanilla. In this case, we're using lemon extract because it's a lemon cake and a little bit of salt and we're good to go. All right, so cakes are chilled. It's time to frost and decorate. I like to trim off the brown part from the top of the cakes and the sides just so they look really pretty when we go ahead and stack them. So we're gonna put our first layer of cake down onto our cake board. I'm gonna do a dam of cream cheese around the outer layer just so that the curd does not fall out when we're stacking. And I also like to put a thin layer of cream cheese frosting over the surface of the layer of cake so that the curd doesn't like soak into the cake layer. Repeat that process with layer number two and then put the last layer on top. Now we're gonna give everything a nice crumb coat, seal in those crumbs, pop it into the freezer for about 15 minutes, and then we can do our final coat. Or if your cake is really cold and your cream cheese frosting seems like it's cooperating, you actually don't even have to do a crumb coat. I ended up not doing one on mine and it was totally fine. I'm just using a bench scraper to do that final smooth, leveling out the top. If you need more information about the ins and outs of how you stack and level a cake, you can check out my tutorial right here on how to make your first cake. All right, back into the fridge you go, and now we're gonna make our water ganache. Basically, water ganache is chocolate, and then you melt that down, you add an ounce of water, 
whisk it together and it makes the perfect consistency for a drip cake. For this, I wanted to see if I could use lemon juice. And let me tell you, this is the most delicious drip I have ever tasted. It is like so fresh. We're gonna start with six ounces of white chocolate candy melts. These are guitar. I'm gonna microwave those for about a minute. And then I'm gonna take one ounce plus one teaspoon of lemon juice, fresh, warm that up for about 30 seconds and then combine them together. Or you could use a double boiler if that's all you have. Let it sit for five minutes just so everything kind of gets melty and then we're gonna whisk it up until it's nice and smooth. Now we can add food coloring. This is just regular gel, Americolor, lemon yellow, <laughs> and a couple of drops of white so that it's not super translucent. Now we're gonna take that, put it into a piping bag, snip off the tip, and we are ready to do our drip. Make sure you let your chocolate cool down to 90 degrees before you use it. I just use a thermometer to just double check. Otherwise, it can drip all the way down the side of the cake. It's also important that your cake is chilled and cold before you start dripping. And we're gonna start doing our drips. Drip, move the bag, drip, move the bag, drip, until we go all the way around the cake. And then we're gonna use the leftovers to just fill in the top, and that's it. Because our cake is cold and our drip is cooled down to 90 degrees, it's not gonna drip all the way down the sides of the cake. Honestly, once you've got the drip on there, now it's up to you. I'm just doing some swirls of buttercream using a 1M piping tip, a couple of slices of lemon, and look at her, she is a beauty and so good. Oh, I gotta taste the cake. Poor me, poor me. Mmm. Oh my God, it's so good. The cake is so soft. If you've ever had my velvet cake, like my pink velvet or my white velvet, it's just like that, but lemon. It's so, so soft and fluffy and uber, uber moist. And then you have that layer of super lemony lemon curd in the center, and then the almost like little bit of tartness from the cream cheese frosting. Seriously, so good. I hope you guys try this one out immediately. <laughs> so that's it guys, that's how you make my favorite lemon cake with cream cheese frosting and a lemon water ganache drip. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Liz Merrick and I will see you guys next week. Bye.